With a lot of bosses in RuneScape 3, there's a lot of people that are trying to kill the wrong level bosses for their skill level or for their character's level. Now, I get the question asked quite a lot of why can't I kill this certain boss? I am really struggling, PVM is way too hard, and what do I need to do to actually improve? More often than not, it is someone who has come from something like God Wars 1 or God Wars 2, and they are instantly trying to do something like Raksha or Zuck or Karapak hard mode, things like this, because they know that those bosses have really good drops, they make a lot of money, and so they set their sights on these bigger bosses to try and get the bigger drops. However, RuneScape doesn't necessarily work that way. For some people, yes, it absolutely will. You can just jump from this boss to this boss because you may just naturally have that skill thing. But for people like myself and for a lot of other people, you need to kind of build your way up. So in this video, we're going to talk about the best five beginner bosses that you should be looking at and killing before you move on to killing higher level bosses that give the big drops. Sometimes you just have to accept that you're going to be making a little bit less money than the PVMers that are killing Raksha over and over again in three minutes and doing, of course, hard mode Zuck, which is, I think, one of the best money makers in the game. Game. You have to start off somewhere, so these are the bosses you should be looking at. So the things I'm going to take into account for this video is one, difficulty, two, the amount of money you can make from the bosses, and three, the things that you can learn there, which eventually is going to help you on your way to killing better bosses. So we're going to start off with God Wars Dungeon 1. God Wars Dungeon 1, I'm going to tie into a hole because all the bosses in here don't really have mechanics. There's not much you need to do except just pray the right thing and kill the boss. The only mechanic that I can think of is going to be the Zamorak boss, where if you have prayer points, he will attack you for a big amount of damage because you have prayer points, and you will drain those prayer points as well. God Wars Dungeon 1 is probably the starting point for a lot of players that are wanting to get into PvM. It is great to start off on practicing your DPS rotations. It is great to make a little bit of money when seeing as at that point when you start out at God Wars 1, you likely won't have ridiculously good gear. You can get into God Wars 1, with pretty low gear i would say using tier 70s is absolutely fine here which really don't cost that much you will not need to have overloads although they are going to be beneficial and you will not need to have ancient curses again these of course will improve your kills and will make it a lot easier and of course having soul split basically means you can almost no food all these bosses that being said you need to keep in mind that as a low level player trying to get into pvm early you are not going to be afking any bosses because at your level now the low level bosses are the ones that are difficult for you at that time maybe not skill wise maybe it's just down to the level of your account and the gear that you've got but as you progress your stuff and unlock more things then these bosses become easier so just sort of think of it like while your account isn't as strong as everything else you can sort of scale these bosses a little bit higher in difficulty due to you just not having the gear or the requirements to actually just fully make them redundant but that kind of goes both ways if these bosses are not made redundant because your account is in a position where it can't just kill them off straight away no issues no problems then the gear that these drop and the amount of money that you get from killing these is going to be worthwhile they could be upgrades as you get the drop if you get say the subjugation drop from krill you may be able to just wear that straight away and be like boom there's an upgrade for me or you may be able to get some bandos from the bandos boss general grado and then there you go there's another upgrade there assuming you went maybe with things like uh, barrow's armor for example so while you may not be doing a full hour here afk making it stupidly easy you can absolutely start out here doing pvm to make yourself some money and of course to improve things like dps rotations getting used to your actual abilities on what they do and how they work and then eventually increasing your bank size seeing as the scale of you having a little bit of money and then getting the two three million gp drops are absolutely worth it once you've done a little bit of practice here and you do have a few unlocks say if you did manage to get overloads or if you did manage to get 92 prayer from the templates and distant quest then you will suddenly find these bosses really easy so once you've got that you've got soul split you've got overloads and maybe a little bit of uh, summoning it doesn't need to be anything amazing maybe just even like a unicorn or something to help with the healing then you'll find this place becomes really easy and you can afk it and get a lot of money while you are chilling out and not really doing much but also getting good experience on your combat skills as well the first in this list is absolutely going to be god Wars one it is not too difficult to do the requirements to get here are very low and the amount of gold that you need to start out with is incredibly low as well the next best boss that you could probably move to from God Wars 1 is going to be the Arc Glacier. Now, the Arc Glacier has an amazing option to be able to turn off the mechanics in normal mode. So if you can turn off the options for normal mode Arc Glacier, you can then go in with zero mechanics, one mechanic, or two mechanics, however you please, and get a decent amount of money from doing this. Zero mechanic Arc Glacier still gives you a decent amount of gold. And of course, being in a position where that may be the next best boss for you to kill, you are going to appreciate that gold more than someone who is, say, I don't know, level like max combat and has all the tier 90s and stuff. They're not going to value that much gold as much as you are, as their upgrades are going to be a lot more expensive than your next upgrades. But if the Arc Glacier is the next best boss for you to kill after God Wars 1, you can still get good drops from here and then of course you are also going to get the option to add a mechanic or two to practice on those you can practice your prayer flicking if you want to do that one by one as well you can practice maybe standing in the right place with the positional stuff and of course this is going to be a better boss to be at than the god wars dungeon one bosses in most cases the less mechanics you have in normal mode you will be making less gold but 
this is still a good boss to move up from God Wars 1 with, so you can practice certain things, and then you can put on the flurry mechanic, which is going to let you practice prayer flicking, toggling your prayers onto the right ones, or you can toggle on a different thing to help you practice your defensives and timing and all that sort of good stuff. Once you've been at the Arc Glacial for a little while, and maybe you've got a little bit more gear now, you've upgraded maybe to like tier 80s, for example, and you've even got kind of a little understanding of how your defensive abilities work, you can then move your way towards God Wars Dungeon 2. God Wars Dungeon 2 is absolutely great, and honestly, even when you get towards like high level PVM, you can still make a great amount of money here, and it's still worth doing, because eventually you just start blasting out the kills ridiculously quick, and you can make an absolute ton of money here. So, as someone who is first getting into God Wars Dungeon 2, I would probably recommend looking Looking at the boss of Indicta. You're going to need 80 attack to get into this boss, so as you can tell, the requirements to actually fight these bosses are probably going to be a bit higher, as they do have more mechanics and they are more difficult, but also they do drop more gold, and you can make a lot more gold from killing these. Vindicta does drop the Dragon Rider Lance and also the Crest of Zaros, which is going to be worth around about 45 to 50 mil, depending on the prices at the time. At the moment, I believe the Dragon Rider Lance is around about 47, 48 mil, uh, and the, the Crest of Zaros is around about 45. So these do usually jump between about 40 to 55 mil i've not really seen them go below or above that for a long time so you're probably pretty set on getting good money from vindicta vindicta has a few mechanics you will have to pay attention to and it is definitely something that you are going to have to practice a little bit before you get stupidly comfortable here so you can just come in and make it nice and easy of course having things like overloads here would probably be a good start having these standard overloads would definitely help a hell of a lot and if you haven't already unlocked ancient curses i would probably recommend working towards them for this as well soul split is incredibly useful here but but as a learner, you will probably want to protect from melee first and then use the switch to range one at some point too, which you would have learned from doing Arc Glacial with one mechanic on the Flurry mechanic. And of course, using your defensive abilities is going to be helpful too. Once you reach the God Wars Dungeon 2 bosses, you are going to want to bring a shield with you everywhere you go to PVM from now on. Honestly, I would even suggest that before these bosses, you also like bring a shield with you everywhere you go anyway, but this is where it becomes like kind of absolutely necessary. As a lower level player doing these bosses, there is great opportunities for you to heal yourself or reduce the amount of damage you're going to take by equipping a shield and using a specific ability. This is where you start to see things like switching become a part of the game and part of PVM a little bit more often. For example, switching to a shield does provide you a hell of a lot of value in PVM. At Vindicta, you can use things like Devotion, which you probably would have picked up from God Wars 1 had you done enough of this, to reduce the amount of damage you take from the regular attacks and also the smoke. You can use Debilitate to do the same thing on reducing the damage you take as well, which means you use less food and makes the fight a bit easier for yourself. Next up, there is also a mechanic where he will fly off and then come back he will hit you with melee and then he will hit you with range and then he'll hit you with melee again if you don't pray flick this you will notice the amount of damage you take from that ranged hit however that being said you can chuck on a shield and you can use resonance at the right time to heal from that ranged hit this can save you a lot of food and if you pair it with devotion and debilitate as well throughout the fight you can absolutely no food this boss it will take practice it is not something you're going to do straight away it took me quite a while to pick this stuff up too and honestly dealing with this boss and learning on the positioning with the smokes once he flies away and then learning to use your defensives at the right time to get the most out of them this boss becomes a very very valuable part of learning pvm vindicta is a very very common choice from people who are swapping from revolution over to full manual then you come back to vindicta and you practice those here because he's not an overly punishing boss but you still have to deal with mechanics this is also a boss that you will see mentioned very often for an entry level pvm boss where you want to improve and get into actual pvm where there's mechanics and stuff this is the first boss that has like great mechanics that you have to deal with that teaches you a lot of stuff and doesn't overly punish you when you make a mistake you will need to get 40 kill count to get into here but once you've killed those you won't have the same issues of god wars one where if you teleport out you have to get the 40 kill count again you'll get a full hour out of your kill count so don't worry about it and you'll still be able to get right back into the fight should you have to bank that being said this boss has the opportunity to make you a lot of money and of course as an end game pvmer i promise you i'm still coming here every now and again to make a bit of extra money while i'm editing videos or doing other stuff as well it is absolutely worth doing once you are comfortable with Vindicta, you might as well make your way over to the other bosses in God Wars Dungeon 2. These bosses can offer different drops, maybe not quite as much value all the time, depending on the prices of certain items at the time. These will just change all the time, you just need to keep an eye out what is best. But there will always be other mechanics to practice on and learn from in God Wars Dungeon 2. It's kind of like the beginner step in PVM moving your way up. God Wars Dungeon 2 offers a hell of a lot of value to players wanting to practice a lot of things. For example, Hellware will offer you a lot more opportunities to practice your defense abilities. You will notice that you will take a 
lot of damage in this fight if you aren't using the right things at the right time. You have to pay attention to his mechanics, one of them being a fast melee attack over time. You want to move away from this and then use freedom to get rid of a bleed that he does apply to you. Once he's done that, he is then going to summon mushrooms on the ground with acid that you will want to stay out of. If you get one of these spawn on you, you have to react quickly because you cannot run out of it. You'll have to use surge or escape or maybe even bladed dive should you have it available at this point. Once you are out of these, he is then going to use another special attack where he will climb up onto his back legs and then he will swipe at you with great force. This deals a lot of damage. You can even use prayer and it will still use a lot of damage. So you want to use things like resonance at the right time, allowing you to get a really good heal, which will probably mean that you can know through this fight should you get this down. But of course, as with all PVM things, there's other ways to deal with it too, using things like devotion or debilitate or reflect, anything like that to reduce the damage so you don't take a hell of a lot of damage at once. Ideally, using resonance on this is the best way to go, but should you not be able to time the resonance like spot on when there's wolves hitting you, for example, using devotion is definitely a good way to go. Once again, this boss offers great value in drops as well. Hellware is a bit more consistent money than Vindictor is. However, the drops, the actual rare drops, aren't quite as expensive. So the value will kind of even out over time, seeing as you get more consistent money per hour at Hellware. However, at Vindictor, you do get the chance at a more expensive rare drop. Hellware does still have good rare drops though, don't get me wrong. The wand and the orb from here are around about 20 to 30 mil, depending how much people are willing to pay for mage gear at the time. And then of course, the crest is still a good amount of money too. The other boss you could look at is the Twin Furies. Twin Furies is another great boss for practicing com something completely different. It is very much about positioning in this boss fight. You will want to avoid someone who is flying around the room and if she does knock into you, you're going to get knocked back as well and take damage. It can be really frustrating at first, but it's something that you have to practice and it is definitely something that will have used later on in the game as well. Then you will also want to stand underneath one of the bosses when they fly into the air as it's going to start raining down some arrows, I guess, or some spikes or something like that. And then you stand underneath that boss that is in the air and you will not take that range damage. So the positioning in this fight is incredibly important. There's also a DPS check that you can work on too to practice your DPS a bit more and improve that way. But when you go through all the God Wills Dungeon 2 bosses, in fact, no, when you go through all bosses in this game, you will usually be wanting to look at your own personal record times and competing with yourself. Do not compete with other people, compete with yourself and try and improve those. That way you know that you're improving in DPS. Anything that you can learn on getting your DPS better is going to pay off in the long run. Do not obsess over it. Don't obsess over your DPS all the time, especially as a learning player, because there's going to be other stuff you want to focus on, things like dealing with mechanics better, reducing the amount of food you use. All these things are going to pay off a bit better early on, as if you are dealing good damage, but you can't deal with mechanics, you're just never going to get through the fights. So focus on getting through the fights first, and then improving how well you get through those fights, and then eventually DPS will open up, because you'll open up time for yourself to DPS. For example, if you're panicking about the next mechanic as soon as the last one ends, then you, you're going to be losing DPS because you're focusing on, right, I need to put my shield on now, I need to be stood here. Whereas once you've done that, you can then just be like, right, I know that in about five seconds, six seconds, the next mechanic's about to come. Until then, I have got time to just focus on DPS. So once you get comfortable mechanics, trust me, DPS will follow along at some point. But that doesn't mean to write it off altogether. Make sure you still focus on it. It's still important. Just don't completely obsess early on. Okay, number five is going to be the Arc Glacier. The Arc Glacier in normal mode is going to be a great boss to practice on once you enable all mechanics. There is five mechanics you can enable and all of them will provide you a great learning experience, not to mention someone who has been working on getting drops that are worth 20, 30 mil can come here and get the Book of When as a drop too. You can work on this boss a lot, improve your times, work on your defensive abilities, work on your positioning, get better at PVM in general, all while you grind out the kills to work on getting the When book. This script costs around about 130 mil as of price checking at the moment. It is incredibly expensive and you can imagine getting 130 mil for anyone who is just getting into PVM and is just starting at say the normal mode version of this boss. This can be a great upgrade for you. Holy hell will this make a difference. You can get yourself a tier 90 weapon, you can get yourself better versions of overloads unlocked or you can maybe get yourself the 95 prayer that you might not have just yet and you can make a big difference to your account here. Getting that much money at once at that point jumps you up absolutely huge and i would say that the arc glacier in normal mode with five mechanics is definitely something most people will be able to do once you follow through these bosses and you've got yourself to the point of being able to do it if you struggle with it when you get here do not stress do not panic you will practice and you will get there i almost guarantee it most people will be able to do this just on the off chance that there is someone who is really really struggling with this send me a dm on discord i don't mind helping you out send me a kill for a clip or anything like that i will look at it i'll watch it and i'll give you some advice the best i can to help you get through this i am more than 
happy to spend some time helping anybody out who is struggling so it makes their game a little bit more enjoyable to do. That being said, I'm almost certain most of you guys will be fine. Honestly, I have no worry in my mind that you guys, once you get here, after doing the other bosses and making sure you're comfortable with those, will be absolutely fine killing the Arc Glacier in normal mode with all the mechanics enabled. So this boss basically teaches you a ton of mechanics that is going to be useful at a lot of other places too. It's going to teach you to prayer flick, it's going to teach you about positioning, it's going to teach you about predicting what's coming next as you only get a couple of seconds of notice on what mechanic you're about to deal with and you also have to do a DPS check on the arms to make sure you get through which isn't too difficult on normal mode. It does kind of jump up quite a bit when you go into hard mode. It will teach you to use things like vulnerability bombs or anything to help you increase your DPS if you are struggling to get through this. It's then going to teach you to use the defensives at the right time to make you get through certain things which is really important of course for future bosses too. You can make a ton of money here and it doesn't have the overall very high requirements to actually start this but you are going to want to get comfortable at other bosses first and you are going to want to sort of move your way up the ladder here don't just go from god Wars one to five mechanics are glacier unless you have the gear for it of course and unless you have the patience to die a lot probably while you're practicing it will take time it will it really will don't get stressed if this takes time so that covers my five best bosses for absolute beginners to the game. The, the path that you want to take from being an absolute beginner to PVM, moving your way up, assuming you want to get into PVM nice and early. There's going to be some changes depending on who you are. There's going to be other people that disagree and suggest other stuff in between, and I'm sure that they will absolutely be able to offer some great advice as well. So don't always just take my word at absolute, like, this is what it is, it has to be that, and it said this, they can't be anything different. Honestly, if people have other suggestions, hear them out, listen to those as well. They may have something that I've missed. They may have something that they think would be valuable to you as well so it's definitely worth listening to that this is just something that i wanted to sort of set out for other people to take a look at and consider as a path that they might want to take while learning pvm once you've got used to the art glacier and five mechanics and some other bosses and you're comfortable at all these other ones that i've mentioned where do you go from there well I personally think that doing things like duos at next would be a great thing as well. Having a duo partner, if they have more experience, just start tanking next so you can just fo focus on dealing with mechanics as you go through and getting used to that sort of environment as it is quite a fast paced boss and there's a lot going on. And then from there, you can work on a Raxor in solo mode, maybe on Law and Rages. And from there on out, you kind of just have to judge on what bosses you can do with the gear that you have access to and where you are at personally. You can go to most bosses from this point. However, keep in mind places like Zuck is like end game stuff. Don't think that you can go from just finishing out or in normal mode to going and killing Zuck, it's probably not going to happen unless you are some kind of PVM god, which good for you if you are. But for most people, you're going to want to look at places like the Carfight King in a duo, or maybe normal mode Carapag, which is a little bit of a step up as well. And these bosses are going to be great. You'll learn stuff from all of them. Make sure you apply the stuff you learned from one boss to the other because they do have mechanics that are similar, dealt with in the same way. And of course, each boss is going to have their own unique mechanics too. But if you understand how most of them work in most places, then you can apply those to the ones that you'll recognize, and then you can learn to deal with the ones that are new anyway i hope this video helped someone out if it did i'm very happy and i'm glad that i made it even should it help only one or two people but let me know in the comments if this was any help to you leave a like if you did enjoy subscribe to the channel if you are new and you like stuff that is helping you improve at pvm as i do a lot of stuff like that and you just like runescape content and overall because i make a hell of a lot of random stuff thank you all to the channel members who support the channel that big extra each and every month your names have been on screen right now of course as always is very appreciated you guys are absolutely amazing like it, it's it is crazy you guys you guys are crazy thank you other than that thank you all so much for watching i really appreciate you taking the time to listen to me ramble on and i will see you all in the next one see you later guys bye